Hi, my doc copy. My name is Dallin Fiddler. Welcome back to another round of session. Uh, about this time, it's talking about wounded knee, and we have a special guest tonight, James Stanningberry and Debbie Day, and a few others that uh, can, can tell us the story of wounded knee. And uh, tonight's program is for that. And I wanted to say that there's a very time that this time was a very special time uh, after a little big harm, but there's some other things that took place between that time and space and then afterwards. And it really infected the Lakota nation, um, the people, in that sense. And all these different kind of things took place. But, um, but yeah, welcome again, everybody. Thank you for joining us for tonight, another episode. And, uh, and um, I'll, I'll let the guest, um, I'll let the Jim begin. Debbie Day is, uh, we tried to link her with the meeting, but they were having trouble uh, logging on even with the uh, meeting ID uh, and my sister right now is trying to figure out how to get on so I don't know what to do with her. <laughs> we okay, have, Debbie we have said, few people here who are logging in uh, via their phone so I'm thinking yeah. maybe De Debbie, Debbie Day, Day just said she's in. I mean I, the granddaughter just said she's in. Debbie okay. there she okay. is. Mm -hmm. there, Grandma. Well I'm on now. Woo! Great to have you. Thank you, Creator. <laughs> All right, Jim, take it away. <laughs> so we've got Debbie on, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a very well-respected elder. Uh, she's the granddaughter of Spotted Elk, uh, who the soldiers called Bigfoot. Uh, and was killed at Wounded Knee on December the 29th, 1890. Uh, she's also the granddaughter uh, of High Hawk. Uh, and so she, she knows all the stories of Wounded Knee because her family was killed there. And she's lived on, uh, she's lived on uh, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe uh, forever. Uh, her home is right across the street from Bigfoot's camp. So uh, feel free to ask her anything. Uh, she would like to talk. Please speak loudly and clearly. Uh, she is hearing, uh, does have a hearing problem. She's 84 years old. So Debbie. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes louder <laughs> okay please please share please share your story uh there's okay. people listening from all parts of the world so oh, share your story okay. with us my name is clementine debbie day and my grandparents spotted elk and high hawk they're all killed at wounded knee they're buried over there with their families and that's where i come from my grandparents both lived around here in this area. Today they call it Bridger. It used to be Trakini, or Manikoju. But since then, they changed it. But my dad's dad, Alec Highhawk, escaped from Wounded Knee and some others. And they ran back from Wounded Knee in the deep snow with no food. Only thing they have was the snow and the little blueberries that hang in on the cedar trees. And they came back to where the rest of the camp was still living. And my grandmother, Buffalo, pretty hair woman, played dead at Wounded Knee, but they were going to throw her in a trance. And she told them that she was alive, so... They picked her up and sent, put her in the wagon and they sent her to Red Cloud in Pine Ridge. And so she came back to Trakini. And that's our family. And when my dad's dad, Alec Highhawk and others ran back from Wounded Knee, my grandpa Alec Highhawk and J.E. Highhawk and M. from Highhawk and the other Highhawk boys that's how my dad know the history of Wounded Knee. And he told me. So that's how I know. But 
when my dad was alive, we went to Wounded Knee, and he prayed over there. So, because when they throw him in that ditch, there's no prayer services or nothing. So I and dad went over there, and he prayed, and I looked at him, and there's tears coming down his eyes. And that was really sad for me to see. At that time, my dad could get around and do things. So that's when we went to Wounded Knee. And since then, I've been over there only about, oh, maybe six years ago. And I plan to go back again this summer sometimes. But you know, that is history. We all have to move on. And I always remember Dad saying those words to me. Remember where you come from, the high hawk and the spotted elk. I've never met spotted elk or high hawk. That's the pictures. We had a whole bunch of pictures, and somebody, my dad, misplaced it or somebody took them away so we didn't have any but thank god i got spotted elk's picture from jim so but there's a lot of history memories that we have and so now and then uh i talked to my brother clement long and we talked about these things but like he said it's history and that's true. But my grandparents both lived around here and have their families. And my grandpa Spotted Elk went to Washington, D.C., just like Red Cloud did, to get help. But the U.S. government er, turned him down. So then he came back and packed up whatever they can and whoever can go with him towards Red Cloud, Pine Ridge. And that's how they were going towards in a deep snow. And they were going over to Wounded Well Pine Ridge Agency. And of course, the Calvary people were looking for them. And they finally found them when they got to Wounded Knee. And they took all the weapons away from them. And they put them, my grandpa spotted elk was in a tent because he was sick. And he couldn't, I think way dad told me he had pneumonia because he couldn't breathe. But anyway, he was killed in a tent. And then they'd like, they throw him in that ditch. And my grandpa, High Hawk, and his family, they were all buried at Wounded Knee. And so now and then, Dad and I would go up there, but Dad, Dad's gone, and my brother and I and other siblings were still alive. But like I said, it's history. And so Daddy, we have... Uh -huh, Tell them about that picture, that, that picture they say is your grandfather. Tell them about that. Oh, you mean spotted elk? Yeah, yeah, the one that they claim is him frozen in the snow. Oh, no, that's not him. That's some old man that they drug out and laid on the snow with a scarf on. And they said that was Grandpa Spotted Elk. And my dad said, no, that's not him. But there was pictures all over, in books and even in Eagle Butte. But Dad said, we know better. That's not our grandpa, Spotted Elk. Daddy, tell them about the Medals of Honor. Oh, yeah. Uh, they said that uh, the Calvary has those Medal of Honors and for killing our relatives. But what I heard that they put those Medal of Honors at the, uh, my son, my oldest son who graduated from West Point, and he's a Lieutenant Colonel. He 
they said he knows where that museum is near Washington, D.C. But he has never been in there, but someone told us and me that those medals were all at that uh, museum in Washington, D.C. There were 20 medals of honor given to uh, the soldiers uh, for killing unarmed men, women, and children. Uh, there was about, I don't know how many people died there, but uh, I was told 300. So, yeah, 20 medals of honor that still stand to this day. Debbie would like to speak before Congress. She's asked if uh, I would help her with that, which I'll do my best with what connections I have. Uh, you know, she, like I said, she said she'd like to do that before she passes. So, like I said, she's 84 years old and running on one lung, but she's the strongest woman I know. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, tell them about the, uh, tell them about the, uh, about them running through the snow and then who survived and who didn't. Well, Alec. Uh, my grand, my, my dad's dad, Alec Highhawk, and the other grandpa, J.E. Highhawk, and Gillian Highhawk, and Dominic Highhawk, and two others, I don't know who they were, but they ran back from Wounded Knee in a deep snow, but no food, no warm clothing. All they got was, like I said, those blueberries that go on a cedar trees, that's what they ate on as running back from Wounded Knee in a deep snow. Hardly any thick, heavy coat or nothing. But when they came back two years later, or I don't know if it's two years or a year later, my grandparents, they died of sickness. That's probably pneumonia or catching cold. The only one that alive was my grandpa Alec Highhawk and J.E. Highhawk. And the other three were died and they were buried in Bull Creek. Yeah, and for those that don't know, a wounded knee to back to Takini is over 300 miles. So they had no coats. They'd just been in a massacre and uh, no food, no nothing. These are young boys. You know, mm -hmm. that's why she says that that wasn't her grandpa in the snow because he had young children and they ran over 300 miles in the snow. Uh, and unfortunately, like she said, three of them died, but that's over 300 miles. If you want to talk about tough picture, you just saw your, your, all your family and friends massacred. And now you have to uh, travel over 300 miles in the snow with no jackets, no food, no water, no nothing. And that's her family. Debbie, um, I want to ask you about the, uh, your, has there ever been a, uh, is anybody planning to, um, you know, what's to deal with the, the situation now with that? Because I know the church burnt down. And I think the, like you're saying, I know it's history, but same time, the local people of our other relatives down there on Pine Ridge have a, are having like a change of heart, I guess, if you will. Um, is there a, you know, are we putting something in place for that to carry on to the, the, the memorial and the honoring of that? Well, I like to have a kind of a board because my both of my grandparents, all of my grandparents live around here. They call it Bridger today, mm -hmm. and after a uh, Jim Bridger, an army officer. But uh, that's why I got help from Jim and the others to put up a board signing, say oh. that this was a spotted elk territory and a high hawk. Mm. But someday they'll take, that was a vision I have for so long. And I'm, yeah. I'm working on that. And then also there at Bridger, I mean, there's a lot of history there at Bridger. Uh, it was called Mini, uh, Mini Koju. Isn't that right, Debbie, before it was called Bridger? Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah the, it, the community was called Mini Koju, which are, uh, you know, the people of, of, of uh, um, how, do, how would you say that, Delwyn? 
Oh, of the the four bands of the area there? Yes, the yeah, campsite. Yeah, because yes. that's the Minico's you. Minico's mm -hmm. you means plants by the water, mm -hmm. which makes yeah. sense because uh, the Cheyenne River runs right through there. But yes, uh, yes, but yeah, they um, the, all this started over the ghost dance is what got everybody fired up. And the uh, Minico's you were heading south. Uh, my understanding was to talk to Red Cloud. I don't, uh, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, to talk to Red Cloud because he had signed the treaty and he was being treated very well mm. to where uh, the people, uh, the Cheyenne River people were not being treated well. So that's why my understanding was that's why Spotted Elk headed south uh, was to meet. And then someone turned them in. I can't remember who told the Calvary where they were. I don't remember that part. Debbie, do you remember that? Uh, some, uh, what they call those, uh, Calvary, they were looking for them, and they met a Calvary soldier, met another soldier, and they told them that that's where they were going, to Pine Ridge. And they mm -hmm. saw that, so they tracked them down. They, they didn't move during the daytime because they were afraid to be found. The only time they travel, Grandpa Highhawk told my dad, is at night. So they won't see, but see him. But then they, uh, somebody uh, to uh, told on them that they were close to Wounded Knee. Mm. At that time, there was no thing as Wounded Knee. So that's when they got that far, and that's when... Uh, those cavalry caught up with them and took everything away from them and even the wagon team, whatever they had. And then they they took all the weapons and then they killed them all with uh, some kind of a uh, uh, machine gun. I forgot Hodgkins or something. Hodgkins gun. Yeah, Hodgkiss. Yeah, at yeah. least that's what Grandpa Alec Highhawk was older, and he remembered. So he told that to my uh, my dad, and it was so smoky. So they ran away from Wounded Knee. But is it true? Uh, someone told me that American Horse uh, testified before Congress that uh, Minico's you fired first. No. Is that true? Uh -uh. No, okay, that's, that's not I want true. a clarification on that. Yeah, no, that's not true. What happened is that all the people, the soldiers were coming around collecting the guns and whatever they can. And this old man, uh, my, my, my Grandpa Ella Highhawk told my dad that this old man was didn't want to give up the gun. He he hold it on. Uh, well, he wanted to keep his gun. He won't give up his gun, and the gun accidentally fired. So that's when they all got shot. It started from this old man. Was his name Black Coyote? What's that? Was his name Black Coyote? No, uh -uh, that part I don't know. Okay. You see, there's so many exaggeration, mm -hmm. so many stories mm. that, you know, really, who knows the whole truth? Only yes. my grandpa Alec and them knows, and they told my dad, and that's how I know. Yes. Yeah. But there, I see here a lot of stories, too many of them. Somebody said there's about 400 people. And that, again, I want to correct that because it wasn't that many that went to Wounded Knee and got killed. Mm. Told my, that's what my grandpa, J.E. and Alec, told my dad. Would you like to share how you grew up? Okay, I grew up up here. My uh, my brother and I 
And our dad was a bus driver in Ritzgaffel. And our mother died in 1942, February 4th, 1942. My brother Clement was born December 2nd, 1942. I was born June 17, 1936. And our dad was a bus driver. But we lived in Ritzgaffel, about 30 miles north of here, Bridger. And what happened was our mother got stricken with tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. So our grandma and grandpa raised us, George Berry Gold, on the flat up here, Eagle Bear Flat. Mm -hmm. And dad joined the Army, World War II. And so our grandparents raised us over here in a log house. And we hauled water, we hauled wood, kerosene lamp, nothing fancy like today. I have electricity, <laughs> running water, I have a car. Oh All of my grandparents were poor, so we didn't have the people like having cars or nothing. But they did the best they can to raise me and Clement. And dad, he joined the army, so he can send. He told us, told me that he pulled KP till two or three in the morning, peeling potatoes. Mm. So he can send the extra money back. But grandparents were real Christian people. And as we grow up, my grandpa had one saddle horse. Well, we have saddle horses, but one horse, uh, Blackie, and he pulled me to three miles down the Bridger Day School, in a, so I sat on a car hood, <laughs> and, I, and I bundle up, and he take me down three miles down to Bridger. Jim knows where I live. Yeah. <laughs> and then when it's really blizzard conditions, then I don't go to school. I was sick a lot because our mother died with tuberculosis. And our dad, he got discharged and came back, and he he was like a mother and a father for both of us, while our grandparents. And he told me as I grew little, of course, I was mostly, I got sick, so I ended up in the sanatorium just like my mom and then I have a what you call lung surgery so I only have one lung and so anyway one day dad told me he said people he, he graduated dad did from high school joined the army and he worked for the tribal councilman for 15 years from our community and one time he told me, he said, Debbie, he said, you could do something for yourself. He said, there's, you could, you, I didn't finish high school, but they come out what they call GED. Mm. He said, do something for yourself, you and your brother. And so I said, well, I'll try to get my GED. So at age 65, I got my GED, and that's the year I claimed Crazy Horse. Three <laughs> miles oh. up. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> three miles up and three miles down. Uh, about that's great. Determined. What's that? That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I took my oldest daughter with me, Darla, and she made. She only went halfway. And she said, Mom, I'm just going to wait down here. <laughs> well, I said, I'm going to go on. And I did. And I got way on top of Crazy Horse Arms. And boy, I could hear that wind up there. <laughs> yeah. And then I start working for the tribe myself. Mm. I was um, a hiring board and also a manpower supervisor for the tribe. Mm. And then I also was a nutrition site manager. I had 13 elderlies I fed in community of Bridger. 
And I had uh, women that helped me, the bookkeeping. And then I quit that, and then I was I turned to oh, the advertisement for community health representative, CHR they call it. <laughs> so I jumped at that, and I was a health worker. I took care of my community, hmm. elderly, young ones, somebody sick. I'm there. I was 80 miles from here to Bridger. I took them over there. And sometimes I drove in a blizzard, but my husband, Kenny, he went and put some studded tires on my car so I won't slide off the road. And so I, I was a CHR for 10 years for the Bridger community. And when that job ended, then there's a Takini school is opening under grandparents program. So I jumped on that. And so I worked at Hakini School kindergarten room for nine years. I tried to keep busy. And at today, in 2008, I was on the Medicine Wheel Village Board. We started that nursing home in mm. Eagle Butte. Mm. And I'm still on it for a lifetime. And then we start, but then they have the wisdom keeper for elderly. So I'm also on a wisdom keeper. I like to kind of keep myself busy while I can. What she didn't tell you was she had tuberculosis twice. Once when she was 12 and then once when she was 18 and still did that hike up to uh, Crazy Horse, which is a six mile hike. Oh, my God. So with one lung. Yeah. At the age of 65. Wow. So, I mean, she she's the best warrior I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah. My dad told me, when you start something, don't give it up. Finish it. That's what he told me. So don't, in other words, he said, don't, don't quit that in the middle of the ship or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then he told the same thing to my brother Clement, but he quit his high school at junior year and he tried to join the army and they turned him down and kind of, he had sickness on his throat. So he didn't make the physical examination in Sioux Falls. But I did the best I can with my life, and now I'm still working for the tribe. The nursing home, I'm on the board there. I started helping them people start at the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a lifetime member of that nursing home in Shine River Sioux Tribe. Until something happens to me, why? Well, somebody will take over and you'll it's probably, wisdom you'll probably live to be 150 <laughs> <laughs> well i'm just yeah. like i like i said we just we all have limited time in this world mm. when no one knows sure. always be ready mm -hmm. always dad told me always try to make get yourself together and get along the best you can get along with people mm -hmm. make friends mm. that's what dad told me mm. and he also said look at yourself before you say anything mm -hmm. clean your yard he'll say mm -hmm. and don't, and don't talk about anybody when mm -hmm. you don't know anything yeah, I mean, that was dad always says those things. Well, I miss my dad. Because he always mm -hmm. have little wise, he always had little wise word for me. Mm -hmm. He was like a mother too. Mm -hmm. I lost my young son. I have three boys and two girls. The one that graduated from military academy at West Point, that's Earl. Wow. He's a lieutenant colonel now, and he sometimes works at Los Alamos, New Mexico. 
And my oldest daughter is a school teacher in Eagle Butte in third grade. My youngest daughter works at Fort GH Hospital. And I got all my grandkids that come home every weekend to be with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always have their home with me. In fact, one of them is here helping me since I broke my back. <laughs> oh, gee. <geez. laughs> oh. Yeah, I got an ugly brace on. And I don't like it, but I have to wear that all the time. What did you do, Debbie? Fall off their bike when you were 75 or what? <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me. <laughs> I love Jack. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, my eyes are not the best anymore. Mm. But I still got my voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. But I did a lot of things for myself and I'm kind of proud of myself yeah much respect dad, to you, Daddy. yes yeah dad always told me do what you can while you're young mm -hmm. get things done get things do for yourself you if you work want to have things you work and have it but my husband and I were all c cattle ranchers. Mm. Mm. But now mm. my husband died of cancer. Mm. So my oldest son, Earl, come, he'll be back in April. Nice. He lives in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. So he runs the business. Mm. I don't. Mm. I just enjoy my social security and they all always say, are you enjoying your golden ears? And I said, oh, what golden ears? <laughs> <laughs> it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> your golden ears. <laughs> I said, my golden ears, my eyes are no good. My hearing ain't no good. And I broke back. Are you still looking for the gold in your golden ears? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yes. <laughs> but I, you know, uh, I, my, my grandparents taught me at, in the log house, grandpa always pray, hmm. tells me, tells the stories, long time ago stories. And before we go off to sleep, he'll pray. Hmm. They walk with faith. Yes. And we go three miles in a wagon to Christmas and church. Mm -hmm. And then we come home at night. But the horses know the road, so they always bring us back home safely. I sit in a wagon with my brother. Hmm. Yeah, there were hard times, but, you know, we live off the land. We mm -hmm. eat rabbit, cottontails, deer beaver and uh, porcupine, you mm -hmm. name it, <laughs> in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And we don't have water so that we always melt snow. Mm. You always melt snow and clean ourselves with it. Mm. Them are old days. Yes. Today I live, so t today I sit at my deck, look at, my goodness, I have running water, electricity, <laughs> I have food. Mm. Nice in those days when I was growing up, I had a paper box for a suitcase. Mm -hmm. but I don't have, but I'm always happy because Grandpa always sings Indian and me and my brother would dance Indian around the mm. stove. Uh, I have a question. Can you all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, my, my name's John. Um, I just had a question regarding the the medals of honor. Is there an idea of a path to getting that um, getting that known? Is is there any kind of way that y'all have been working towards getting that request seen by the right people? And if so, what is it? Debbie, do you getting want to answer that? Or do you want me to answer? 
Well, to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, I'm I have nothing to do with that. Let me answer. Let me answer that. Um, uh, to answer the question, uh, the state of South Dakota, they just voted uh, to rescind those medals of honor. There were 20 medals of honor. And now it goes to, if we can get an audience, it goes to Washington. Okay. So, I mean, everybody's just hoping and everybody's trying to get the word out as much as we can. But I mean, if anybody has resources of getting the word out about the the medals of honor that would uh, that would really be great because okay. uh, Debbie hasn't t told any of the real graphic stuff but what they did to the children and stuff was pretty graphic mm -hmm. and uh, some of them in that mass grave they buried them in a mass grave that wounded me I mean and they just shoveled them off in there some of oh, them were not dead and so they just covered mm -hmm. them up I mean, they just covered them up where they lay. Uh, so uh, I've been to Wounded Knee. Uh, I was on the last uh, Bigfoot ride um, that goes all the way from uh, up north all the way to Wounded Knee. And uh, I mean, it's it, what they did to the men, women, and children was pretty bad. It was really, really bad. And uh, the, 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 I read uh, one of the soldiers' uh, diaries of what he was saying uh, when they took them to the church. They just loaded them up in wagons, uh, the wounded. And, of course, they were freezing. And the comment that stuck in my mind probably the most that he wrote down, uh, he was a doctor. And he said that the woman was asking for water in, uh, in Lakota. And uh, so he gave her a drink and it ran out her neck. Oh, okay. yeah. So, I mean, it was, I mean, what they did to the people, I mean, brings, I understand why her father had tears in his eyes because what they did was really, really bad. And I've also heard other things, uh, what they did to the kids after it was all over. Some of the kids were, had been hidden uh, by their mothers. And um, uh, they said the soldiers uh, told them it was okay to come out and then they would shoot them. Yeah. yeah so, uh, for getting uh, 20 uh, medals of honor for that, I, I, I just, I can't imagine. That would be like giving Hitler, you know, their highest award for killing 6 million Jews. Huh. We have a ledger of my grandparents. My youngest daughter, Carlos, got that ledger. Oh, from your grandparents? Yeah. Uh-huh. And what they wrote down? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, there you yeah. go. There's your true history. Of but it's all, it's all reading in Lakota. And as much as I speak Lakota, I couldn't hardly read it or understand what it says. But we have that. Dad, Dad knows. And he's the one that tells me all these things. And in, in the future, remember what I told you. Debbie had, uh, had a vision about going to Washington. And then also about a billboard uh, commemorating that um, uh, that her grandpa Spotted Elk and High Hawk, uh, that was Spotted Elk's camp where Bridger is. And uh, you can actually even see where they ghost danced. Uh, for those that don't know what the ghost dance was, uh, there was a uh, holy man uh, from the Paiute tribe, Wavoka. And he had a vision that if, if the P Indian people did this dance, that all the buffalo would return and that all the dead would come back uh, alive again. And that the white <laughs> man, and then that the white man would disappear. And uh, so some of these people did this ghost dance until they died. That's how desperate they were. Uh, at Bridger, you can actually see where they ghost danced across the... Uh, Cheyenne River. Yeah, and that's basically what caused it wounded knee. And then also it was a payback uh, to the Lakotas from the Seventh Calvary is what a lot of people said that because of uh, the Battle of the Little Bighorn, which the Lakota called Battle of Greasy Grass, uh, it was a payback. Montana. For yeah, 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 that's right. And uh, Debbie's going to try to, uh, for those that are listening, 
uh, we're planning on being back up in the Lakotas in June. And Debbie's would like to go with us uh, if she's physically able. And of course, according to, depending on what COVID's doing, because mm -hmm. she only has one lung, but uh, wants to go to Wounded Knee. And did you want to go to Custer Battlefield too, Debbie? A little big horn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jim, could you just uh, quickly share with us what you do and how you know Debbie and all of about a little bit about your work? Yes. Yeah. That's no problem at all. Do you see what kind of hat I got on? Turtle Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Yay. I salvaged what was left of my face mask and put it on my hat. So. Wow. <laughs> I'm yeah, sending you more. Uh, <laughs> to tell you a little background on me, um, ever since I was a little boy, um, I was always drawn to elders. Uh, I, a lot of times I was with my grandparents, both sets, uh, because uh, my parents, uh, they would lead me for long extended periods of time. So I was pretty much raised by my grandparents. Mm. Well, back in the, when I was young, I'm 60 now. And when I was young, not everyone had washers and dryers. So all the elderly people went to the laundromats. Well, I was just a kid and I would go over there and listen to their stories while their washing was going on or it was drying. And, I, and they would tell me stories of, of their life. So I got to hear so many wonderful stories of, and, and keep in mind, these elders were born in the late 1800s that I'm, I'm referring to and, and early 1900s. So I'm, I'm hearing stuff that's just absolutely amazing to me. Well, I was addicted to that. And uh, uh, I made a pledge um, uh, that someday I would help my people. Um, we passed through this town and I said, who lives there under that bridge? Because I could see structures under this, this highway bridge. And they go, oh, that's Indian people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I swore that I'd help my people someday. So that's what I've done. People always said, you can't do nothing um, because you're just an individual. I said, you know what? I'm a fat old man with an old pickup, but I bet I can do something. And so I visit the elders of the different reservations and I ask them what they need. And then I reach out and ask people, can they help me? Mm. And people have, they've helped me with food. I mean, a lot of people go without food. A lot of people go without uh, warmth. I mean, you would not believe every year uh, people freeze to death on the reservations. Every single year people freeze to death, usually the elderly and, of course, the homeless. And I wanted to change that. And the suicide rate was extremely high among the youth. And I was drawn to that because my only child, Dakota Wheatley, uh, killed himself uh, in 2016. He hung himself and we found him hanging in the garage. Uh, so suicide is, um, I, I wanted to change that. So I've been approached by many nonprofits, um, but usually they wanted me to help them because uh, I was good at marketing because I know how to get the word out and I've got a lot of friends and fans around the world. And so uh, I would, I would share, but then, uh, Plaza and Auntie Nanco showed up and I, I asked them the That's same the thing. Point. I said, am I helping you or are you helping me? Because <laughs> usually they just wanted my help and they reached out to me and, and, uh, they have been helping me and we're doing bigger and bigger projects. Uh, you know, uh, I, I had an elder That's from, um, uh, uh, Barrow, Alaska, uh, called me in tears and thanking me uh, and thanking the partners uh, for saving his people mm. because uh, the COVID up there with the Inuit got really bad. Mm. And he said it saved a whole lot of them, uh, the mass that we sent up there. Mm. And I hear the same thing from C uh, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Uh, I've heard that from the Navajo to the South. I mean, so that's what it's about. It's not about me, you know. I mean, I'm just doing what Creator wants me to do. You know, all I do is I pray and I say, where do you want me to go and what do you want me to do? You know, I mean, my old pickup's got 150,000 miles on it, but I know Creator will keep it going. 
So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with my little apartment and I can, I've slept in my truck. I don't mind doing that, you know? So I'm just going to keep on doing what I do to help, help the people. And there's, there is so much need. I mean, uh, we've talked to several reservations where the water coming out of the sink is uh, out of the pipes is brown or yellow. And then sometimes it don't come at all, you know, and, and, and uh, I have people saying they're hungry. I've been asked, I've had children approach me twice on two different reservations asking me if I had food because they were so hungry. And that's here in the United States of America, the richest country in the world. So that's why I do what I do. Uh, I speak from my heart, not from my head. And, and I'll keep going as long as creator wants me to keep going. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for everything that you do. It's been a blessing and we are very honored to work together. Yes. It's my, on, it's my honor as well. It's my honor to work with, with all of you. And thank you uh -huh. have, for having a heart for the native people. Mm. Our numbers were 100 million when Columbus landed. By World War II, we were down to 250,000 people. Uh, we're now to 5.4 million. Mm. Uh, but so I, I'm grateful to anybody who extends a hand in friendship uh, that mm. understands our plight uh, and that we're still here, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've come through hell, but we're still here. Uh -huh. Yeah. We haven't given up. We're not going nowhere. We're still yeah. here. I hope. And you know, we are so great that Jim's helping us on a reservation. Mm. We found him. He found us. And mm -hmm. It's very helpful on the Shine River reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, great to have a person like him. Uh -huh. We appreciate his help. Mm -hmm. In life, Thank we you, struggle, baby. but we keep on trucking. Yes. That's right. Keep yes, ma'am. Yes, Unchi. Yes. So do we have any more questions out there, ladies and gentlemen? Or is that pretty much it that's coming up to the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. This is Brenda from Minneapolis. Um, I just have a question how do we, okay, we individually help and by spreading, sharing, disseminating information. How do we get it to snowball into something big to help the reservations? For those of us who do not live on one um, or live there with people, I'm an urban native, oh. so I, uh, it's hard for me to, you know, I guess not relate, but to get into what, you know, the bigger, I know what the big issues are. People are hungry and people are homeless. Mm -hmm. And in this country, it's, it's, it's a travesty mm -hmm. that my people, your people, our people, are, it just breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. So what what can we do that's bigger and maybe you can I guess you can look keep staying in contact with us uh, we are we got so many different projects throughout different reservations and throughout the states and Canada mm -hmm. and the world um, and we're taking it on uh, all aspects of, of of each project to each reservations and state okay. to state, country to country. And again, just like Jim said, my brother Jim, he just said like, uh, Debbie Days, you got to keep trucking and yeah. we got to even, you may seem like you're individual, but actually you were, like you're saying, it's like uh, since the pandemic, we prayed about this years of, you know, like just like what, this last year we created a pausa mm -hmm. and then just very quickly, uh, certain people came in our path and mm -hmm. it just took off like that. And then now this is what we're doing now. And we're just, uh, uh, get into that next level of, 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 of that, that interpretation of what's needed for the people. And it's yes. never ending. And that's, that's the heart that we all have. And at, and at the same time, we don't want to, um, uh, in, uh, bring any harm to anybody in a general sense, mm -hmm. but we don't want to face with the consuls or the treaty, uh, the, the tribal councils, because it's the elders that make more, uh, is, is the say, in every mm -hmm. state and every country territory of the native nations 
um, okay. and helping them directly talk how we are. We don't go with the drive because many times that we try to do it in a diplomatic way in that kind of sense, they want to have about 200 meetings before you even get to, you know, within <laughs> two hours. It is the truth. Nothing yeah. gets mm -hmm. done. So um, this past November, we had the opportunity to share that and actually do it. And unfortunately, some, you know, we had a venture because some of the reservations that, that uh, could not believe they were kind of shocked, but, but also amazed that we all joined forces together as a collective uh, mm -hmm. unit per se, as people together doing something for the people in general sense of education, um, mm -hmm. history, uh, the food, the clothing, the coats, uh, transportation, trying to use bikes, trying to for the youth, the suicide trying to talk about that also talk about okay. the homelessness talk about the elders and uh um so yeah we we're, we're just kind of like um doing what we're doing and they made a lot of we made headline news uh several times last year and again this year and it just it just it's getting bigger as, as we speak so now we have oh, these that's webinars great. like this to educate whoever wants to listen but also recording them so if they mm -hmm. want to participate in that kind of sense they can i'm all welcome uh, I would like to add just one brief thing, if I may. I also posted the link to our project page uh, in the chat room, but uh, we are also big believers that the change should come from within, you know, mm -hmm. versus outside. And um, if you look at our project page, uh, we'll be updating it soon. There are all kinds of different projects happening, you know, and it's not so much even about the money as about, you know, building right. up people, who, uh, you know, who have the skill sets and the desire and passion to do something to contribute to the systemic change, you know, from mm -hmm. within. So because that's what what gives hope to the people, you know, mm -hmm. that that kind of self-sufficiency that. Uh, Debbie Day was uh, speaking of earlier on, you know, how people used to live on the land mm -hmm. with so little, you know, and uh, that kind of knowledge is um, very it's valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. Ha <laughs> um, I also wanted to say, Brenda, that it's just, you know, I know it seems like it's a huge, huge issue, and it, and it is, it's, it's big, but, you know, we just take one mission one person, one community at a time. We listen to their needs and we just start working with them and they share with us and and uh, it grows from that point. So, you know, it's just one thing at a time and, and the change is coming little by little. Oh yeah, I understand that. One foot in front of the other. Yeah, uh, it's just one world. thing yeah. at a time. <laughs> yeah. What I always say is there uh, many drops of water make up the mightiest river or ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're all them. little drops of rain. Yeah. But when they come together as many drops, we're powerful. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're doing. Uh, we uh -huh. talk directly. We try, we're, uh, I'm a traditionalist, uh, as mm -hmm. Delwin yeah. is as well. And we talk directly to the elders. The elders mm -hmm. were always ahead of everything yeah, because yeah. they hold our wisdom. And so if I go to the elders, I know the elders won't lie to me. They'll speak truth. Mm -hmm. So if they go, Jim, we, we have no food. Jim, we have no coats. Mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah. they, whatever they tell me, then, I, then we, not me, mm -hmm. we meet the need. Mm -hmm. If Jim, if there's anything you want me to do or anything, I'm most familiar with you. Um, but I will go to the Turtle Mo or uh, Turtle Island site. Yes, please. And see what's yeah, going on. yeah, and please time. follow Brenda. If you'll follow us, um, yeah, uh, I am I know you're one of my friends. So, so but if you'll mm -hmm. follow us, uh, you'll get updates on the projects we're working on. Uh, you know, currently I'm working up north on that project. Uh, ah, some of the others are working in Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, no, that All right, sounds then. really good. Okay. Right. Thank was, you, Debbie, everybody. You want to say this anything else? Most Debbie. awesome. Most are you awesome, there, Debbie? guys. What's I, said, I said, do you want to say anything in closing? Well, I want to thank all of you to let me speak the truth about my two grand grandparents. They were both chief, mm -hmm. High Hawk and Spotted Elk. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where I come from. Beautiful. And I want to thank Jim for helping us here in the community and all of you to listen to my story. Mm. Thank you. That's Thank you. who I am. Wow. And as Beautiful. Native people, we made America great. Mm. Uh -huh. I'm not Trump. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Trump, but <laughs> <laughs> we, we were here first. Oh. <laughs> and and it's, it's a struggle to yeah. be a Native American. Yes. You know, yes. hard times, mm -hmm. sadness, mm -hmm. lots and lots of things. Mm. I went through it so much. Mm. So I know how it is. But today, here I am, electricity, mm -hmm. running water, mm -hmm. car. My car is not working the best, but at least I have a car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And my health and my health is not good, but I still got my voice. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. and I don't know how much time I have in this beautiful America, the world. Mm. And I have great grandkids. Mm. I have all colored grandkids. Mm. That's <laughs> not, beautiful. Yeah, my right now one of my granddaughters is overseas, Persian Gulf, serving mm. our country. Oh, it's mm. beautiful. Yeah, my dad was in the army, mm. aircraft. He was always wise, tell me things. Mm. Yeah, he always says, clean your yard before you say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful I advice. Well, yeah, I really sure miss him. Mm. Yeah. Because right now, just my son and then they live here alone, Dustin mm. and I. He's my handicapped son. Mm. So when I run into something, I wish my husband or my young son or dad, somebody would be here and help me, but... I have my nephew here, but he'll be pulling out in May. Mm. My son and him, they're calving cows here. I have no part of that, but they are using the grounds to calve their cow, to have their cows calve. But I enjoy life. I can ask much for my Wanikia. <laughs> that he gave me life every mm. day that I open my eyes. I'm mm. here for my grandkids and my kids. Beautiful. And mostly the friends I made all Chicago, Missouri, mm. Minnesota, mm. and Jim, mm. and Cherie. And I made friends in Texas, mostly Christian people. Mm. Yeah, and I'm very thankful that yeah. I have these friends. Yes. You know, I thank oh. God when I go to bed mm. for their safety and my safety. Mm. Yeah, and that's for everybody in this world. Mm. Today, oh, today's yeah. world, what's going on is I don't like it, especially what happened at that capital. Mm. They're not really Americans. They raid the capital and hurt people. I don't call them Americans myself. Yeah. I was watching it on CNN. Mm. These people hardly know Wanikia, so the way they act. And then, based on lies, what happened at the capital. Mm -hmm. Those things never happen uh, growing up. Well, thank you again. Um, this will conclude for the uh, series today, the episode. And thank everybody for showing up and uh, come to the next um, episode in the future here, another two weeks. And thank you again, Debbie Day. Thank you again, Jim, my brother. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.